Hi, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh, and we've shown you how to build a lot of different airplanes, but one thing we've never really covered well is how to hook up your electronics, very specifically, into our new Speed Build swappable kits. Now, if you guys have never done this before, this will work on all different models of all different sizes as long as they're electric. You'll get the basic principles to hook up your electronics. Our first step is to put the pod with the motor aside for the moment because the first thing we need to do is get the receiver to talk to the transmitter. Now, we like these little Spectrum guys because they're very easy to bind, and it's also very easy to demonstrate the principles of binding this to it but every manufacturer has a different way of doing it. Futaba has a push button, Airtronics is different, so always read your specifications from your manufacturer on how to make your receiver talk to your transmitter. Uh, for this one, we're gonna take our bind plug though, and we're gonna insert it where it says battery bind on the very bottom. Now, the next step is gonna be to take our ESC signal wire and also follow the, the directions here. If you see that little horseshoe looking thing, that actually stands for signal. The minus is ground, the plus in the middle is your uh, positive. We're gonna go ahead and insert the ESC right into the throttle. Keep in mind that the signal wire is also where they told us to be, which is on the top. The next step is to simply take our battery, hook it up, and if we did everything right, you're gonna see a flashing light. We're gonna hold down our trainer switch and with throttle closed, we're going to turn it on while holding the trainer switch. Once it stops flashing, we're bound. We have a solid light. That means that this is now talking directly to this transmitter, and they're linked up. We can remove our bind plug and power it down. Now that we have the receiver talking to our transmitter, the next step is to connect the ESC to our motor here. We're going to simply do this by connecting our ESC leads, the three of them, to our motor leads. Now, don't take... Uh, too much concern about which order you put these in because if it runs backwards we're simply going to switch two of these leads to make it run the opposite direction. Nowadays a lot of manufacturers include the bullet connectors and the connectors on their ESC already soldered up for you but for some reason if you order a motor and doesn't have the bullet uh, connectors or the proper connector on the ESC and you have to solder it uh, we do have a video that will be linked to below that will give you the basic techniques on soldering bullet connectors ESC and for that matter even your battery connector basically teach you how to solder if you've never done it before. Uh, feel free to look at that link below if you need to do that step and also it's very important while we're doing this step not to have a prop on your airplane uh, reason being is if it goes full throttle for any reason it can cause damage to the people or things around you simply put a piece of tape this will give us a good indicator on whether the motor is running clockwise or counterclockwise we want it to run counterclockwise to be proper now that we have the tape on the front of our motor to simulate our prop we're going to go ahead and power on our transmitter and we're going to move the throttle stick all the way to full this is only done once to calibrate your ESCs to tell it the ESC how much throttle range your transmitter has. So you only need to do this once. We're now going to connect our battery. Wait for two beeps. Move the throttle stick all the way closed. And your ESC is now calibrated. The next step is to see which way your motor is spinning. We want it to spin counterclockwise. And as you can see, it's spinning clockwise. That's wrong. We don't want that. So we're simply going to fix that by swapping out two of these leads. Does not matter which leads you pick, any two will do. That's perfect. We want it to match the rotation of the prop. Now that we're happy with that, we can remove our tape, unplug our batteries, and we're ready to center up our servos. Now don't take it for granted that just because you have servos new in a bag that they're automatically centered. They'll almost always be slightly off for some reason or another. So we'll simply dump out our components. And this is very simple. We're going to utilize our power pod. Um, it doesn't matter which one you plug it into, but I always like to go into the aileron port. Now don't take it for granted that all the servos are always going to be in the same location for every manufacturer. Uh, Futaba actually has a different order and it's actually numbered, not actually spelled out for you. Um, in this case, um, where I guess slot one would be throttle on this one. Slot one is actually aileron, and then it goes to elevator, throttle, rudder, and then your auxiliaries. This goes throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, gear, and then your auxiliaries. So just keep that in mind. Always check that out. Don't take it for granted if you have a different manufacturer. Uh, read the manual. It's very, very helpful. But I'm going to go ahead and plug this into the aileron, and I'm going to make sure that my servo is centered up with on its trims. You don't want to have all your trims be cornered to one direction or another. And I'm also going to listen to the signal wires. Now you can see that this wire goes white, red, and black. And this one is orange, red, and brown. Orange is the signal wire, brown is the ground wire. So if you see two different color wires, these seem to be the two common color codes uh, for leads. Uh, just know that the signal wire is orange or white. Now that we have this on, we're going to power up our transmitter. We're going to verify 
We're going to listen for one long beep. That's one end. We're going to listen for a beep in the middle. That's the middle right there. Every manufacturer will be a little bit different, but usually there's one long tone in the center or you have a digital or a physical indicator on an LCD showing you that you're in the center. Let's go ahead and power up our servo. And we got our servo powered. Now it's important to notice and stuff that we didn't have to power up a separate battery uh, to make this all work. The ESC actually has a built-in BAEC, which stands for Battery Eliminator Circuit. It feeds five volts directly to this wire and acts just as if you plugged an onboard battery onto that. So your servos are actually being fed from the same battery that drives your motor. It's a good practice to put your control horn on. Now, if you know the orientation that your servo is going to be going into, obviously follow that now. But we'll simply slide that on. Once again, check for motion. And then we'll fasten it in with a servo screw. Now one thing to keep in mind, your servo screws on these that fasten the servo arm to the servo will always be the smallest one. Don't try to drive the ones that actually fasten it to the model or you're going to destroy your servo. Now, just say when you get this in the airplane, it's backwards. The DX5E is very easy to recognize this. You look here, normal, reverse. If this is backwards, all we need to simply do is go in here and push it to be reverse. And the servo will go the opposite direction. So just to show you here, I'll corner this out. There's reverse and there's normal. Opposite direction. Now please keep in mind, when you're reversing throttles, always keep your prop off until the very end of the step because if you accidentally hit your throttle, you're gonna activate your motor to full throttle. So that's a good reason to always keep your prop off while it's on the bench and you're working on your electronics. We now have our servo centered, our ESC calibrated, and our transmitter bound to our receiver. The last step is to finally put this prop on to the business end of our pod. We're going to go ahead and simply do this. Now this is called a prop saver. Depending on which manufacturer you choose, you're going to have different ways of fastening your prop. What this will give you the ability to do is you hit something, give the prop the ability to move, and also you hit your hand, it's going to give it a little bit more give than the other one and hopefully it'll pop that rubber band off before it causes too much damage. Now it's important when you're installing the prop, you can put the prop on both ways. Always make sure that the prop is pointing forward. In other words, the numbers on the prop are always facing the direction the airplane needs to fly. If you have a pusher, the prop will still be in this orientation even though it's turned around on the motor itself. Well friends, your power pod is now ready to go on any one of the swappable series and I sincerely hope that this helped you uh, conquer any uh, questions you may have had in regards to hooking up electronics to electric powered aircraft. Now if there's anything we haven't covered for you, feel free to go on our website, check out the articles in there, or go to the forum and post a question and a lot of knowledgeable people will be really quick to answer your questions for you. In the meantime, I want to get this on a plane.